Hey everyone, I'm Wyatt, and today I'm going to show you how to script a door on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how we're going to make this, I want to show you how it functions. So if we go into the game, what you do is you click the button, the door opens, you can go through, you click the button again, and it closes. So to start, what you're going to want to have is an empty base plate with a door and a button. You can have walls and other things, but all you need is a part named door and a part named door button in one model. So the first thing we're going to do is create a click detector inside of the door button. And this is so when we click the door, it'll be able to open. And then we're going to add a script to handle the click. Now we're going to get into coding. So the first thing we need to do is include the tween service. So we're going to say local tween service equals game dot get service tween service. And then we want to create a variable that references our door. So we're going to say local door equals script dot parent dot parent dot door. And we also need to have a reference to our door button right there. So we're going to say local door button equals script.parent because it is the parent. And we also want references to our click detector. So click detector And we also just want one more variable called door close so that if we know if the door is closed or open, so door closed equals true. All right, so we have that. Now what we want to do is handle when the click detector is clicked and we want to open the door if it's closed and close the door if it's open. So we can say click detector dot mouse click connect to connect that to a function. And inside of this function, we want to tween the door upwards, as you saw in the beginning. So we're going to create a new tween by saying local door tween info equals tween info dot new. And then the time that it's going to take to do the tween is going to be two seconds. Oh, there we go. All right. Now we also want to specify the end position and the end size since the door is going to scale upwards and also move up at the same time. So we're going to say create a new array called end position. And now we're going to handle if the door is closed, we want to open it. And if the door is open, we want to close it. So we're going to say if door closed is true, then we want to open the door. But then if it's not open, or if it is open, then we want to close the door. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to specify the position of the end position for the open door and the position of the end position for the closed door. So end position dot position equals vector 3 dot new. I'm going to say door.position.x because the position isn't going to change on the x-axis. And then for the y, we're going to say door.position.y plus door.size.y divided by 2. And what this is going to do is set the position of the door to right here so that when we scale it down, it'll be able to you know, scale down and it'll just show that there's nothing there. And then finally, our Z position is going to be the same. So door.position.z. And now we want to set the size of the door so it scales upwards. So end position dot size equals vector3.new door.size.x and then we're going to say zero because we want the door to be invisible. We want it to be nothing for the y-axis. And then door.size.z because we don't want that to change. 
And along with this setting the door, we also want it so when you click the button, it turns red if it's open, but if it's closed, it turns green. So we're going to change the brick color of the button. So we're going to say door button dot brick color equals brick color dot new. And we're just going to set it to really red because we want that nice vibrant red color. And then now we're going to do the same code, but it's going to be to close the door. So end position. Actually, what we need to do first is set the door close position and the door close size. So those variables will be the size and the position of the door right now. So we'll set that up top. We can say local door closed position equals door dot position and local door closed size equals door dot size. So you can scale this up or down as much as you want for your door and it will always scale back to that when you close the door. And we're going to actually set the size and the position when you close the door again. So end position dot position equals door close position. And end position dot size equals door close size. And then we also want to set the brick color of the button once again to lime green so that everybody knows they can open it. So door button dot brick color equals brick color dot new lime green. Just like that. And then we want to set door close to true because it, the door is closed now. And up top we actually want to set this to false because now the door is open. And finally, so we need to actually create the tween. So we set all of our variables up, but we need to create the tween so it actually animates. So we'll go right here and we'll say local tween equals tween service colon create. And then we're going to create the tween with the door. And we want to tween it to door tween info. And then the end position. And then finally, we just want to play that tween so it is fully working. And we can watch it happen just like that, super easy. And yeah, let's test it out. Let's see what it does. Oh, I think I messed up somewhere. Oh, yep, right there. We just need to say colon instead of a dot. There we go. test it. We press it once, door opens, it's red, and then we can press it again, and the door closes. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like to download all the assets and models for this video, I have a Roblox model link in the description, and if you need want to get the code, I also have a pasted link with the script, uh, and I'll see you later.